Well, we're going to start this Zoom with Monica de la Cruz Hernandez first. My name is Maria Garza Brown. I am a board member of the Hispanic Republicans of Texas, and I want to introduce Monica de la Cruz Hernandez tonight. She is running for the 15th Congressional District. Monica isn't new to politics. Last November, she lost by a narrow margin to the Democrat incumbent, and she is back. There was a major surge of border counties going red, and Monica led the way in her congressional race. District 15 was the only congressional race in 2020 to hit a less than 3% margin, making Monica the top most competitive, competitive race in Texas and the third most competitive race in our nation. Despite the Democrat efforts, though, outspending her two to one, Monica was able to swing her district 18 points from the previous 2018 election, which had never been done before by a Republican. Hidalgo County specifically awakened in 2020, and, those, and one of the reasons is because of Monica. The grassroots efforts showed that, it allowed, that although it fell short, it now had a real shot at flipping what has been a safe blue stronghold for over 100 years. Please welcome Monica de la Cruz Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me this evening. I am just excited and humbled to be here today to talk to you all. Perfect. Well, we're going to start off first. I want you to tell me about yourself, your family, and why you're running. Absolutely. So I am a Valley girl uh, through and through. I was born and raised in Brownsville, Texas. I was raised by a single, hardworking mother. She was a secretary at DHS and really taught us about love of country and opportunity, the American dream. She always said, you're so lucky to live on this side of the border because truly you can accomplish anything you want. And my brother and I set off with that mindset. We love this country. My grandfather served in World War II as a U.S. Uh, Navy, in the U.S. Navy. My brother served 20 years in the U.S. Army. So very proud of him. Today, my husband and I own three small businesses and have worked very hard to um, serve our community. The reason I decided to step up in 2019 is because I was watching the destruction of our country and really the vilifying our border patrol agents and our law enforcement agents. And my husband and I became increasingly concerned that the American dream was not going to be there for our children and that our future protection, those that are interested in law enforcement and border patrol, we were not going to have those generations believing in our country the way that uh, past generations had. So we decided the time was now, and we stepped up in 2020 and decided to run here in South Texas, specifically in Hidalgo. And wow, the amount of support that we got was just incredible of your hard work to Monica, which now you mentioned about the border. One of our questions, one of our attendees has asked is, as someone who sees the border crossings and interacts with the border agents, can you share your perspective about how this situation has become a human crisis under the Biden administration? Well, look, um, what the Biden administration and current uh, Democrat representative Vicente Gonzalez have done is they've taken a crisis situation and made it into a catastrophe, not only on a humanitarian basis by uh, making those most vulnerable young women and children and infants, putting them in the hands of cartels for human trafficking, sex trafficking, we see on the border, not only in our clinics, but at the McAllen Pregnancy Center, uh, young ladies who are coming in who have been raped and sexually assaulted several times. We hear their stories from the Border Patrol agents. We actually see on a local basis the stories of children and infants as young as right now the Laredo sector just put out that yesterday they found 
a two-year-old with an infant child abandoned on ranch lands, two years old, abandoned by cartels. Can you imagine the horrificness of that situation? And our border patrol agents, our brave uh, men and women who are on the front lines, seeing this every day and the mental anguish and emotional stress that they're having to endure but not being able to do their job, which is protect our borders and give us the security that we, uh, we deserve in America. And look, when it comes down to it, I support legal immigration, as do most people. We are a melting pot of opportunity. And these illegal immigrants who are coming because of the Biden and open door administration, uh, uh, open door policy, is bringing in these illegals who are not going to have a true opportunity to get to the American dream. And it is absolutely absolutely horrific. The Biden administration has stopped building the border wall. They reinstated the catch and release program. And of course, they have this open borders where they just let people in with no processing, proper processing for immigration. It's just a human crisis. And it's so sad to hear about that two-year-old. I, I can't even imagine. I can't. I, no. So, in bringing that and hopefully solving some of those issues in the 2020 elections, they're asking you help create a massive swing for CD15 from the Democrat to Republican. Why do you think that shift is happening across South Texas? Well, it's quite simple. Hispanics and the people in South Texas stand by three things, faith, family, and freedom. And what what the Democrats don't get is that we have lots of immigrants, first recent immigrants, legal immigrants, and uh, first, second generation that fled countries where there is socialism, where they are persecuted, where they don't have their gun rights, where they don't have their freedom of speech, freedom of religion rights. So these things that the Democrats are putting out there, where they're promoting socialism, where they're taking away our religious freedoms, where they're making our Second Amendment and putting that Second Amendment at risk, those things just simply do not reflect on the Hispanic community and what we believe in. We had the opportunity in 2020 to knock on doors. It was a pure grassroots movement. You know, I thank you for sharing my name out there, but quite truly, my name was on the ballot. However, it took hundreds of volunteers from the north to the south that made this happen because we knocked on doors, we educated people, and we shared with them South Texas values are conservative values conservative values or Republican values. That's the equation. And those values resonate with the Hispanic community. And so I stood by my values and people came with us. And I think that that was just the start of what we're going to see in 2022, which what we're going to see in 2022 is this district flipped along with many other Hispanic dominated districts flip as well. That brings us to now. What uh, One of the questions is, how do you feel this election is faring differently than your 2020 election? Well, you see, in 2020, as you mentioned, people looked at CD15 and they said, oh, there's not a chance. The Democrats own the Hispanic vote. Democrats thought that. And so we did not get any support on a state level or on a national level from the party. Obviously, we, we fell short, but by the smallest margin in all of Texas and without any real resources of help from the state and the national party. 2022 is so exciting because now the state party is stepping in, the national party is stepping in. I've got the endorsement of almost the entire Texas Republican legislation, along with leadership on the national level. We have uh, donors from all across Texas that are looking at District 15 and saying, this is a district that not only can flip because we have the right candidate in the right district, but if we invest just a little bit of money educating people, 
then we have the opportunity to flip this district. And make no mistake, it's not about money. Democrats have always, or in most cases, outspent Republican candidates. So it's not so much about the money, but what we have are the hundreds of volunteers from north to south. And when you add the passion and the work ethic that money cannot buy, along with the support of the patriots in this district, then what that equals is success for 2022. Awesome. Well, you sound very energized, and I have no doubt you're going to win, Maria. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Another question we got was What do you think are the most important issues in your district, in District 15? Absolutely great, great question. In fact, we hit on one of the top issues, which is border security and legal immigration. Those are the the, that's the top issue. What most people don't know about CD15 is right here in Edinburgh, Texas, we house the largest border patrol sector in the entire nation, in the entire nation, right here in Hildago County. That being said, border patrol agents, there are friends, there are families, there are neighbors. And that's why I am so proud to tell you that I am the only candidate that is officially endorsed by the National Border Patrol Council because they know that I'm going to stand with them when elected. I am going to support our law enforcement officers and our border patrol officers. So that's number one, border security. And I'm already working with border patrol uh, council so that we can get them the support that they need. Number two, they're really concerned about inflation. Right now, because of the Biden administration and my opponent, the cost of goods are going up. What Americans are concerned about and the people in CD15 is gassing up their car, that it's costing double the amount to gas up their car. Inflation is real and it is at our doorsteps. This is making everyday living difficult for the average American. And so those are the top two issues, along with, of course, healthcare and education, which we see on a national level where people are concerned about getting their kids to school and that they're receiving the proper education in the right environment. And of course, healthcare, that there is low cost um, prescription drug medication for them when they are sick. What is your plan when elected to enact, enact policies that support these issues? So let's start with the Border Patrol agents. First and foremost, they need more agents on the ground. So we need to start hiring more agents, get them the equipment and the personnel that they need. Number two, we need to close the loopholes that uh, give illegal immigrants uh, tax benefits and benefits from the federal government. We need to do that immediately. We need to continue to build the border wall that gives us security. And here in Hidalgo, it serves a dual purpose, which it serves as a levy to help us from flooding in those low-lying areas. And of course, what we also need to do is stop the catch and release program that the Biden administration has re-implemented and encourages people to come in. We're thankful to the federal judge who re-implemented the Remain in Mexico policy because that also was of great help to the Border Patrol agents. So that is first and foremost. Under the previous administration for health care, President Trump had lowered the prescription drugs for diabetics. And we, you know, unfortunately here in Hidalgo, we have a high diabetic population. And so by lowering the prescription drugs for uh, the diabetic people was very helpful on the pocketbook. Guess what? Under the Biden administration, all those prescription drugs have increased. So 
I want to work on, again, lowering healthcare costs and prescription drug costs for not only the average American, but for the people specifically in CD15. That is one disease that hits the Hispanic community, a large Hispanic community in, in, as far as the, the stats go. So that is, that is great. So yes. um, now you're, the next question is, in what ways do you think your current representative and Democrats across the nation are out of touch with Hispanics, specifically the Tejano vote? Well, look, again, um, what Hispanics stand for is faith, family, and freedom. Number one, they're out of touch by um, in, the, in the COVID years or in the COVID time, pre at the beginning of COVID, uh, they did not want anybody going to churches. They did not want people in their places of worship. So again, not allowing us to worship. We are a peoples of strong faith. And so with myself as your representative, I will not allow that. People should have the freedom to worship, to choose to worship when they want to at the place that they want to. Number two, family. We want to protect family values. This is one of the things that I'm passionate about is the pro-life movement. Look, we have a lot of Christians and Catholics that want to protect life. And I would hope that in any case, that we ensure that we are protecting life at every level. This is one of the reasons why I'm also endorsed by the Texas Right to Life Group, because family values is important in protecting those. And of course, freedom. We are a nation. We are a country. We should be a country of law and order. And that's why Hispanics have migrated through here over many generations, because we believe in law and order. And what has happened under the Biden administration has been the, the disrespect the dishonoring of our servicemen, of our law enforcement. They're taking away law and order by defunding the police. What we should be doing is funding the police and supporting mm -hmm. the men and women who wear uniforms because they are quite literally putting their life on the line on a daily basis. So, the messaging that the Democrats are, are, are portraying, also keeping us at home, not allowing people to work, closing down businesses. Right now, they have a, an over $3 trillion bill out there to, that's going to hurt small businesses. And Hispanics specifically, they like to work. They want to work. They don't want to stay home. And so the Democrat messaging and the Democrat bills that they are putting out, including my opponent, is not only hurting Hispanics, but not is not a lot aligning with their values and with their work ethic. I totally agree. So yeah, definitely, as far as the, the new plan that they have, uh, we've got to get that out. We've got to let the community know how that's gonna impact. And I think you have that down pat and I really applaud you for that. So our next Thank question you. is, we saw on Instagram that uh, Adrian Benia Garza, yourself and Hildago yes. County GOP were recognized in the Texas Monthly about the work y'all have done in South Texas. So tell us about that. Tell us about that article that was written. You know, that is such a proud moment for everybody in South Texas. What she represents is the movement that has taken shape in 2020. And what an honor it is for us to see one of our own on the cover. Look, as I said before, my name might be on the ballot, but it was hundreds of volunteers that made this happen. Adrian Benya Garza was one of the leaders that was at the forefront and has been at the forefront of this fight. And she deserves the opportunity to be on there and be the voice for us because she has fought 
so hard and sometimes on a very lonely road because there was a time before 2020 that it was not popular to be a Republican, that it was not spoken about to be a Republican. People did not run on the Republican ticket because they did not think they had a chance. And and Adrian, as a small business owner, as a success, successful entrepreneur, as a mother, as a community servant, to go out and put her name out there and become a leader in this movement, be a leader in this movement, it just speaks volumes as to her character and to where we are headed in South Texas. And let me tell you, we have a storm that has a wide tier in South Texas, and that storm is called the Republican Party, and it is just beginning. I'm excited to see what 2022 holds and the many more leaders that will rise up for the occasion. Now we have an option. They have an option. I mean, growing up, it was all Democrat. It was a Democrat ticket at all time, and I think it's great, and that's what was missing. People were afraid, as you said, that or, you know, not brave enough to get on the Republican ticket because there wasn't any Republicans. But now that you guys are finally making some headway, you're talking to people, educating them, making them realize that their values are very, very close to the Republican Party. Just about we all, you know, we we are pro-life. We love our family. We love our faith. And um, y'all have made uh, an exceptional leap. For the for the Hispanic community, honestly, yeah, that's awesome. So this we have one more question, and this is going to be a, a a good one about social media, right? We all are on social media. I know I follow you on Instagram, and you're on Twitter you. and everything else, as everybody else. But and as you have seen, the Met Gala has been trending, especially with the AOC dress. Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts of her speech talking about the working man, and yet? We know that a ticket to go to that gala goes $30,000. What are your thoughts on that? And what would you call that? Well, look, we see this over and over and over again with Democrats. And this is just one more example of the hypocrisy that they stand for. You know, their motto should be do as I say, not as I do. And what arrogance of her to show up to a gala, $30,000 a ticket, wearing that statement when, again, who is she making it about? Herself. Instead of what the gala and what the fundraiser was supposed to be about. Over and over again with the Democrats, hypocrisy and arrogance. Again, two things that do not resonate with the Hispanic community. They don't like that. And to see that she would go out there and talk about taxing the rich and 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 she's out there and at a thirty thousand dollar ticket gala is just disgusting and the people of CD and CD fifteen and the Americans are sick and tired of this kind of messaging they're sick and tired of this kind of arrogance and that's why. We are seeing the movement, not only here in CD15, but everywhere in the country where the people are saying, no more. We want conservative, fiscally responsible leadership that cares about our country and our American citizens. And I believe that in 2022, not only are we going to flip this seat for the House to take back the House, but we're going to flip many, many more seats to take back the house and to ultimately take back our country. Wonderful. So well said, Monica. You inspire me. Uh, So we're at our end of our session here. I know that you have had a lot to say, but in the next minute or two, what what do you want to tell our audience? What, What do you want them to take from this and go tell their friends and family? Well, what I would love your listeners to know is that I may not be in their district 
physically in their district. But by supporting me financially or volunteering with our campaign, you are supporting a conservative candidate that will vote for conservative legislation that will ultimately affect you, no matter whether you're in my district or outside my district. So what many people say is, well, gosh, I can volunteer and I don't even live in your district. That's right. You can volunteer with us, even if you don't live in our district. And so I invite your listeners to follow me on my social media pages, Monica for FOR Congress on uh, Facebook and on Instagram, Monica for the number for Congress on our Twitter account. And you can also look us up on our website, Monica for Congress, hit the join team Monica button and be a part of our team. And if you are in a financial position to be able to make a donation, Every dollar counts. And it was proven in the 2020 election. We got no big PAC support or big national support. It was hardworking Americans that donated $10, $100, and they made this movement inch forward to success. And I thank everybody for that opportunity. It was such an honor to talk to you. I haven't made it down to South Texas yet, down to your region. I am headed to Alice and and Nueces County, the Jim Wells County in Dallas, but we definitely want to make a trip out there, have lunch, do something and do whatever we can for you. Absolutely. I greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for having me this evening and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Same here. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye.